All right, panel, here we go. So this first question is to all three of you, right? Okay. You're going to talk to us a little bit about your beliefs about students and how those are reflected in your practice. Eric? You know, we, we do believe and know that all students can learn, and this is not new to anyone, but I think that the piece that goes along with that is that we have to be willing to do what students need in order to be successful. Um, what I mean by that is, in our school, we're all male school, and I try to model and make sure that our kids, our students get what they don't get from home. Um, and I try to model that so that we create a, an environment or a culture where our young men want to be, they desire to be there, they hate to leave and go home. And so I think it's vital that we become that bridge between home and school, that it does become a safe haven, particularly for African American males. Um, it's, it's big in our school that, that we love our kids. And I, I prescribe to a book, if you've never read it, please read this book called Other People's Children by Lisa Delpit. Um, that's like my educational Bible. And I truly believe that the unconditional love for the unlovable sometimes is the missing link between the success of young males, uh, particularly in our school, and their, their unsuccessful future. Esther, want to jump okay, in? Okay, thank you. Um, the Middle College at Bennett has a motto, and it states, success is not an option, but an expectation. We expect all students who enter our walls to be successful, and we provide them with the academic supports and other support systems to reach this goal. Our teachers first have to believe in our students, and we impart that belief to them and their families. We also build relationships. We think relationships are key. We not only build relationships with our students, but we build relationships with their families and with all of our community stakeholders. We have found that we have to not assume that students know how to be learners. We work with them. We help them set goals. We help them put um, steps in along the way to measure their success. And if they're not reaching the goals they've set, we help them modify and make changes and readjust. We let them know that there are going to be some times when you have setbacks, but with the spirit of perseverance, you can achieve. And when you have a school culture that um, cultivates the ideas of success and the students can feel it and everyone is supportive of each other, then you can have a school environment where truly you can say success is not an option, but an expectation. Um, I would start by saying that my belief system is that uh, we can be excellent, and we ought to be excellent in all that we do. And so um, the folks in Guilford County know that I talk about excellence and say that it is the only option. Um, a lot of times I think that we don't really understand what excellence really is. Um, why are we settling? for the outcomes that we've gotten before when we know that we can be excellent. That our young people are marvelous, intelligent, bright, capable people. And so anything short of that, of us providing um, all we can for our young people, um, I say we're doing a disservice to them. That belief system then sort of works itself out in the following way. Um, one, that we've got to be willing to say to some of our adults, no thank you. That's a tough thing to say in any industry. It's particularly difficult, I think, to say in the business of education. Uh, because we are, I think, and I'm a lateral entry educator, let me get that out on the table up front. But I think we are the type that will say, well, maybe give someone another chance. You know, that's what we, that's, that's sort of the nature. But the reality is, I think, that we've got to be willing to say, no, thank you. Um, to some folk who will not say, well, no, every kid can perform at the highest levels possible and I'm gonna do my part to make that happen. 
And um, if I'm not, then that's okay. I love you, but I gotta love you from a different position. And so that's, that is in that belief system and then how I believe it starts to play out is being able to say to our educators, um, I trust these, I trust these individuals. Hire the very best. If you don't hire the best, that's okay. Then we'll work with them. And if it doesn't work out, we need to be able to say no thank you. Say no thank you. That is so important, I think, for, for us in education as we go forward. May I piggyback on this? Absolutely. You know, when I think about excellence, you know, excellence I think oftentimes we think is a skill. And it is not a skill, it's a mindset. And it's the mindset that we bring to work every day and mm -hmm. we, it's transferred to the people that we work with. And you know, I look at our students as clients as, and I believe in servant leadership, so I serve the people that are my clients, whether it be my staff or my students. But I remember, and I don't mind being transparent with this, this is my first year as a principal and it was the same year that um, Superintendent Green was um, in Greensboro, he came to visit our school, and I was just happy and elated that he came. <laughs> Here he comes, I saw him coming through the door, I said, let me go meet him. And so we toured the school, and when he left, he said, I don't see very much going on in here. <laughs> <laughs> And he talked about excellence right after that, and I'm trying to justify what's going on in the school. <laughs> but it caused me to go back and reflect that day and ratchet up what excellence truly is and to try to get that to be just contagious throughout our building. And I thank him for that because that's the kind of transparency that has to take place, not only in the school, but in the district to foster the excellence in children. So I do thank him public for that. I'd just be glad he didn't say, no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, again, to all of our panelists, um, as you've worked to establish schools that prepare all students to be college and career ready, certainly you butted up against some obstacles, be they cultural, political, or structural. Can you tell us a little bit about what, the, what you think is standing in the way for us to have quality schools throughout? I think one of the key things, um, and the first thing we need to look at to truly have quality schools is teacher quality. Teachers must be knowledgeable of student learning. Teachers must be knowledgeable of teaching skills. And then last but not least, they must have a commitment and a passion for our work. Um, without teachers of quality and quality teachers in our schools, we can't have schools of excellence. I also think when we look at our current system of accountability, it can hinder us from providing meaningful opportunities for learning for our students. So many times we find ourselves covering material that is going to be accessed on a test. And we do not devote the time to learning that's going to be meaningful for our students um, as they pursue dreams and goals that may not be measured by a multiple choice test. And sometimes we have a lack of resources, whether they're human resources, fiscal resources, um, time is a big resource that we all have very little of. And the lack of resources can also be barriers that we have to overcome to provide quality education um, for students in our schools. I, heard, I read one time and I heard somebody say this, that when you're through changing, you're through. Mm -hmm. And I think tradition um, can be a tremendous barrier and hindrance to excellence in our schools. Um, I, I don't understand not teaching a child the way they learn. And so I think once we get past the mindset of this is the way it's always been done, this is the way that I do it, I like it this way, it's comfortable this way, I've been doing it for the last 38 years. Um, I think until we get past that, then we will not reach the true essence of what's in our young people. Um, we, we serve some marvelous, intelligent, talented young people, but I think sometimes as adults, we get stuck uh, in just the way that I like to do business. I have an incredible history teacher, and you know, he says if, if they can't learn the way you teach, then you need to teach the way they learn. And so that has to be just something that's just resonating throughout our buildings in order to bring the success and remove some of those barriers for our students' success. 